Got another guest to talk to, the DA joining us by phone, Warren Montgomery. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Charles. How are we doing? We're doing fantastic, and good morning, listeners. So uh, let's talk real quick. Are you feeling all right, and are things at the office okay? Let me tell you what. I'm feeling great, uh, and things at the office, well, you know, we, we've down to us. We really have a skeleton crew at the office, so... Uh, now, among that skeleton crew, things are going great. Uh, we're practicing our social distance, and we're getting the work done. But uh, 90% of my staff uh, is uh, is working remotely. And uh, so we have people in the Franklinton office working, people in the Slidell office working, uh, people in uh, the Covington office working. and But 90% of the people who work for the the, uh, the citizens of Washington and St. Tammany Parish, 90% of those DA workers are actually uh, working from their home. All right. And uh, what have been the challenges of that? I mean, I, I've heard some dialogue about how this will change the uh, at work versus working at home dynamic forever, that we've realized that, uh, you know, a lot of jobs can be done while working at home. Can that job be done long term while working at home? I would I would estimate that 80 percent of it uh, could be done remotely. Now, Charles, there's a there's an element of of work where that face to face communication is really important. For instance, typically I come into your studio and you and I talk on the radio. I'm on the radio, but we are directly in front of each other, and a lot of communication. In fact, most communication. Is, uh, is visual. Uh, you see people's reactions, et cetera, et cetera. It's not just the words they use, but the tone they use and their voice and uh, what their face says, uh, their expressions uh, and their gestures, as well as the words. So I, I really am a big believer in face-to-face -face communication, and we lose that when we just do something on the radio. However, with technology, with uh, FaceTime and with Zoom, you can get a lot of that back. And so we're getting, I think, uh, a lot of the communication done that we need to get done. And one of the things that happened at my office when I was first elected was I decided to use technology to try to increase our efficiencies and drive down the cost of doing business. Because just like a private enterprise, just like your organization, if you can use technology to decrease your cost, uh, you can pay yourself more. Well, in our case, if we can uh, increase the use of technologies, we can reduce taxes uh, or at least at the very least produce a, a better a better product for the citizens. So uh, when I got in office, no one at the DA's office had an official DA email address. Uh, no one had uh, or very few people had laptop computers. Uh, we were not able to remotely access the files of the clerk's office, and the clerk of court holds a lot of information, both uh, Johnny Crane in Washington Parish and Melissa Henry, uh, who does an excellent job. Both of them do great jobs. As clerks, we couldn't access that information, as well as access the police reports. So we began to connect. First, we got everybody their, their computers, got everybody email addresses, and got everybody uh, access uh, electronically through the web, and we began to communicate with those different offices. And so once you're able to do that, you can get, and now using Zoom or FaceTime or other means of communication, uh, you can get about 80% of your work done, uh, even if you're in a remote location, and that's what we're doing. All right, sounds good. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and talk some more with the DA right after this. Going to get back with the DA. Uh, Warren Montgomery is hanging out with me via phone. And there was, a, there was a nonprofit that you wanted to talk a little bit about that you've had some interaction with, and that nonprofit is? James Samaritan. And, you know, we were just talking about uh, what, how I'm using technology to uh, reduce the uh, cost of doing business. And by the way, one of the ways we, we do that is when someone's arrested, they're entitled to a bond. And it used to be that we would have to transfer the person who was arrested 
from the jail over to the courthouse. Uh, well, now we don't have to do that. We can use technology, Zoom technology or FaceTime, so that the person can still be at the jail, uh, whether it's in Franklinton or Slidell or Covington or wherever, and we can set their bond electronically where the court uh, is, uh, the judge is in his chambers, my DA is wherever he is, the, uh, the uh, defense attorney is in his office, uh, the, uh, and of course the prisoner is uh, in jail. And uh, we, we, we save money and reduce, reduce the risk of this uh, contagion being, uh, you know, it, uh, increased, uh, this pestilence. And so we're doing a lot of good things in that regard. But get back to, but that's the front end, so to speak, of the DA's office is, uh, or rather the back end, the people who did something that they shouldn't have done and have been arrested. And we have to deal with them. The front end is what can we do to stop people from engaging in, illegal activities. Well, you know, and I think everybody, all our listeners will agree, one of the great ways is by having good mentors. And of course, the greatest mentor in our life, generally speaking, is our mom and dad. But what happens if your mom and dad aren't available? What if there's some problem of one kind or another and you're, in essence, an orphan? Well, that's where the foster care system comes in. And James Samaritan is a private, non-government organization that assist our foster care system here in the North Shore. And when I mean the North Shore, I mean all the way from, uh, really from Baton Rouge to Slide Out. Uh, and they do a fantastic job of connecting volunteers and resources with foster care children and foster care parents. And they help so many people who really need help. So I want to encourage your listeners to uh, go to uh, the Internet and uh, plug in James Samaritan. Samaritan, just like the Good Samaritan in the Bible, James Samaritan. And you can learn about this organization, learn about the great things they're doing. And if you have some, your, some free time on your hand, uh, on your hands during this, this particular uh, episode in our lives, uh, maybe you can help out James Samaritan, and if you by doing that, you're, of course you're helping out these these young people, uh, and of course, frankly, you're helping out me uh, in the criminal justice system because the more you keep these people, these young people, and give them hope and an opportunity, the less likely I am to meet them in a courtroom. All right, well said, well said. So uh, that. Obviously, is one of the great nonprofits here locally that's working. Uh, you see a lot of this, right? Not only through uh, through that effort, but the specialty courts. You get to see some neat things as well. Oh, absolutely! And I have to give a shout out to the judges of our judicial district of Washington and St. Tammany parishes because we have more specialty courts than any other judicial district uh, in in the state. We're leaders in that regard. In fact, I'd like to think we're leaders at the DA's office uh, in that regard. And, and what, it, what these specialty courts are, and let me just give you the names, and you can imagine what they do. We have a sobriety court for DWIs. We have a drug court for people who are arrested for uh, possession of drugs. We have a, a family reunification court uh, for maybe people engaged in domestic violence. We have uh, a veterans court people who have gone overseas serving our country, possibly uh, suffering from PSTD, uh, from post-traumatic uh, stress disorder, and they commit a crime, become engaged in the criminal justice system. And instead of sending them to jail, we send these people into these specialty courts where they're given some help and some assistance. And of course, if they don't straighten up, they don't fly right, uh, fly right well, maybe we have to put uh, incarcerate them. Mm -hmm. But isn't it great if we can keep them out of our jail systems and in the community where they're productive? And, of course, it's less expensive. It, it saves money, uh, keeps our community safer, help them, helps them, and, uh, and it's less expensive. So we have a lot of great things going on, uh, and it's really as a result. Uh, these judges who, in my office, we participate in these specialty courts, Nobody makes a dime. This is extra work that these judges do that my assistant DAs perform simply because we think this is better uh, in many instances. And it is better 
than in, in most instances because the level of recidivism, the rate at which these people reoffend, is much less if they go through a specialty court than if we just ship them off to a prison. All right. Well, we're out of time. As always, we appreciate your time and uh, calling in, and uh, we hope to talk to you again real soon. Charles, thank you for all the great things you do in our community. All right. There he is, your DA, Warren Montgomery. We'll be back with more right after this.